Hello and welcome to Aqua Rach. My name is Rachel and today I am going to walk you through my process from sketching to final art when I do a watercolor and ink illustration. So what you're seeing right here is just my sketchbook and I have a couple figure studies over on the left so just ignore those. They're not relevant to what I'm going to show you today. Um, but I have a little thumbnail study that I did on the page on the right, up in the upper left hand corner of that page, and then a larger value study. And what I'm doing here is just trying to kind of figure out what my color palette is going to be. I know that I want it to be a very limited color palette. There's not going to be like a lot of detail because this is just an illustration. And I try to keep my illustration style pretty light and fun so I don't like to get too serious with it. So I'm just kind of experimenting with what colors look good and really my aim here is to have the interior, so the room that this illustration takes place in, I want that to feel a little bit warm and then outside there's just going to be like a blizzard going on. And the inspiration for this illustration was that we had a snow day today. So I actually work at a school. I just started working at a school fairly recently. And so this is my first ever like snow day that I was able to not go to a job because it's blizzarding. And probably most of you know, if you live somewhere where it blizzards a lot, you usually don't get the day off from your job just because it's blizzarding. You usually just get out an hour early and shovel your driveway and try to make it without getting yourself into a ditch. <laughs> so I was really so happy to have the day off today and I decided I would do a little bit longer art piece than I typically have time and energy for at the end of the day. So it was a really nice way to spend my day. So what I did was I was looking all over the internet for reference photos that I could kind of put together to create this illustration that I had in mind. And I was just thinking it would be kind of some like general scene that was mostly fictional. But I decided because I couldn't really find any photos that were inspiring me and usually what I'll do is, you know, I'll find a whole bunch of photos online and I'll just use bits and pieces of each one of them as source material to do an illustration. But that wasn't really working out and I was wasting so much time online just looking at pictures. So I set up a tripod and I remembered that I had this little remote control shutter thing for my camera phone or my phone camera and so I actually posed for this picture. My dogs were in the photograph with me. Of course they weren't like doing this in the photograph. They're dogs so they never you know posing and doing what I want them to do. So they're easy enough to make up. I just wanted to make sure that really I wanted to get the lighting right. So I wanted to have a really nice bright but cold window and then relative to that, the interior needed to be pretty dark, but I wanted to make sure I could get the light right shining on the figure, the dogs, the bed. I had my coffee. It was just a it was just a nice day and really fun to get to work on something like this. So yeah, I did those couple of sketches in my sketchbook and then I did a sketch on copy paper which you just saw me finish up and that's what I'll transfer onto my watercolor paper and I decided I wanted to do this in a square format I just kind of like that a lot better sometimes I wish I actually had square watercolor paper because I kind of feel like if I crop off any watercolor paper I'm wasting it but not really I'm sure if I found a watercolor notebook or tablet or whatever with square pages it would still cost just as much <laughs> So it's not really a waste. I'm just silly. So I have my carbon paper under the copy paper and I'm just transferring all the main lines onto the watercolor paper so that I have a nice clean template to work from. And this is what I pretty much always do 
whether I am doing an illustration or just a little bit more complex art piece that I want to be fairly precise and I don't want to kind of mess around and scribble all over my watercolor paper and erase things. So I like to use that transfer paper, also known as carbon paper. And now I'm using my dip pen and India ink to just kind of outline everything. And for an illustration, I don't really mind it looking, you know, a little bit more cartoonish or whatever. When I do other pieces that I kind of think of as more art pieces and not illustrations, then I try not to do too much outlining with the ink. But here it just kind of works. And it allows me to go over the entire illustration with washes and not really lose those lines. At one point I was kind of worried that maybe I had accidentally put the wrong lid on this bottle of ink because I was applying watercolor a little bit later and I felt like the ink was smudging a little bit. And if you've seen my video on waterproof versus water soluble inks, you know that India ink tends to be waterproof, but I also sometimes use Sumi ink. But you know, I kind of tested it out and it was India ink. I was just being a little bit paranoid. So what you just saw me doing there was I want some snowflakes in the window. So I'm using masking fluid and a toothbrush and I just covered every part of the illustration that I didn't want to spatter masking fluid all over. I covered all of those parts with like paper towels and paper so that when I spatter the masking fluid, it would only spatter in that window area. And one thing that's really important to know about masking fluid, first of all, is that you absolutely must wait for it to 100% be dry before you go over it with your watercolor. And sometimes you'll get a large glob of masking fluid and it will just take forever and ever and ever to dry, but you just have to wait. And sometimes it's really frustrating. I know it is for me. Um, and it's best to not even try to like pick up the extra masking fluid I've found because it just kind of creates some weirdness that I prefer not to have. And then another thing is if you get masking fluid on a part of your paper that you didn't mean to get it, you still need to wait for it to dry before you try to, you know, peel it off of your paper. Because if you put masking fluid on your watercolor paper and then you try to pick it up while it's still wet, all you're really going to do is actually push the wet masking fluid into the fibers of your paper and then you won't even be able to get it off later. So always let the masking fluid dry before you do anything, whether it's, you know, putting on watercolor over it or needing to pick some of that masking fluid off. Just wait, it's very important. And you can use a hair dryer to help it dry a little bit faster. So what I've done here is I've gone over everything with kind of a initial wash of my colors that I'll be using. And the color palette I decided to go with is my favorite color palette that I've just been using so much lately. So it's that M. Graham Cityscape palette that I purchased and if you've watched any of my other videos you've heard me ranting and raving about it. I just absolutely love it. It just it's so unique and I, I think that it's just refreshing sometimes to not be working with just the typical primary colors you know. So I decided to use that. So it consists of Payne's Gray, uh, Pyrrhal Red, and Hansa Yellow and then I decided also to use one of the Daniel Smith blues that I have and I honestly I cannot remember what it's called but you can see it in the window and I'm really only using it in the window just because I wanted the outside to look extra cold compared to the inside and it was a little tricky because as I said I was going off of one of my own photographs that I just took today of me kind of sitting by my window cuddling with my dogs I'm all cozied up in a hoodie and sweatpants and I'm reading my watercolor book and I've got some hot coffee and my French press. So I was all cozied up and it's blizzarding outside and this is just my favorite thing to just be able to be home, be inside when it's snowing out. Oh man, it's just the best. But anyway, my bedroom is all blue. So <laughs> I was like, how am I gonna make the inside look really, really cool? But I still kind of want this to be true to life in a way 
So I decided to just kind of warm things up by giving this nice underpainting or undertone of the Hansi yellow, the Purell red, and even the Payne's gray is a little bit warmer than that blue. So I feel like it, it came off quite nicely. I really, I'm trying to get more into illustrations and I don't have a lot of experience. So this is me just kind of practicing and trying to be more creative with how I paint and not just paint in the typical way that I'm used to. So, you know, I kind of struggled with making a couple decisions throughout this process, but overall I'm pretty happy with how it went. I tried to keep it very loose and as I said before, just very kind of simple, not too realistic or anything like that. And I just really tried to focus on light. So the way that the room compared to the outside, out through the window, should be very warm, but it also needs to be really dark so that window really seems to shine bright. So that's what I really focused on, just a simple color palette and getting the lighting effect that I wanted. So now that I've got that initial wash, I'm basically going in and focusing more on values. And this is why it's so important to do a value study if you're doing a project like this where you're not just simply using a photo reference verbatim, you're trying to be a little bit more creative. To me, it's very, very important to work out the composition, the stylization, and the overall values of the painting. Because if you think about art, painting, drawing, whatever, value is really, I think, 90% of it. Yes, we all love color. Color really attracts us. But think about it. You could do a painting in just black and white. It can just be a, you know, an ink painting. And you're still going to get that light effect as long as your values are correct. And so the color kind of just becomes the icing on the cake. And I've learned that, I think, the hard way. I've really struggled, I think, when I'm doing any kind of painting where it's in color. But it's hard to sometimes judge color by its value. So that's something that I'm actively working on myself. And it's definitely a struggle. It's not easy. But what does help me is just to do those value studies ahead of time so that I can at least start thinking of how dark I need to go sometimes because I think with color, I tend to work a little bit lighter. I interpret colors as being lighter than you know I would if I was doing everything grayscale or black and white. Okay, so not totally done with the colors, I don't think, at this point, but I'm going in with my gel pen to see if I can try to bring out some whites. It's doing a few things for me. It'll especially help me where I have the face. Maybe just there's not enough contrast in the face. I just need a little bit of light on my nose, on my glasses, hair, things like that. So this little gel pen is really helping me bring out the highlights on the face right there. It helped me a little bit with the steam coming out of the coffee. It's not gonna do much to kind of bring back some of the snow, so I'm going to be using some white gouache in just a little bit. And now I'm going in and restating some of the darks. So going in with more India ink, adding some texture to my wall, because I kind of have a paneled wall even though it's painted blue. And then I'm going to go in and just restate some of the outlines that I want to be a little bit bolder because I just used my dip pen initially to do that. So now I'm using a small watercolor paintbrush to make the lines a little bit more bold where I want. And one thing I didn't really anticipate though was that these areas where I'm going really, really thick with the India ink, you can kind of see a sheen and that doesn't really go away. So even when the ink is dry there's a little bit of a sheen to it which kind of bugs me but you know you just learn those lessons along the way I guess and I typically use my India ink uh, not so boldly and so I've never really noticed a lot of sheen 
So you can see that there's areas where I go over with the India ink, but they almost look lighter instead of darker just because the light is reflecting off of those because it's a little bit shiny. And I think now, yep, I'm going in with some gouache. So one of my dogs, I kind of, when I went over the window, I painted the white of this dog's fur. Her name is Hazel. Painted her a little bit blue just because I figured she, since she was looking out the window, she'd have a little bit of that cooler light shining on her. But then I felt like I had gone a little bit maybe overboard with that. So I'm going to go over her a little bit more with this gouache. And then I'm also going to add some more texture, especially down toward the bottom where the snow is accumulating on the ground. I didn't want any details out of the window. Like I didn't want any scenery. I thought about it, but I figured it'd be too distracting. And this is basically it. So I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you also had a really nice day.